so I've been following along in a Haynes manual, and they never mentioned this, but it turns out in order to uh, get out this front uh, fixed uh, chain guide, we have to get in this little opening right here with a, uh, with a wrench. I believe it's a Torx. And the engine mount. The front engine mount's in the way for that operation. So uh, out it has to come. What we're going to do is jack up, uh, put a jack underneath the oil pan, spread the weight out as much as we can with a board, and then uh, and start removing this. And there we have it jacked up. Don't forget to put a block of wood under there so you can distribute the weight. You want that jack uh, crushing the uh, oil pan and the weight of the engine comes down on it. Okay, we're going to get this unit out of the way first. 13 millimeter on that one. Looks like this one's a tad bigger, like 15. This one's 15. We'll have to half inch on here because it's a little deeper. A little chill in the air here this morning, so I've got to now we can pick up and set this cruise unit out of the way here. Okay, here's the next one. That's a deep well job right there. 15 millimeter deep well. Seems barely on there at all. <laughs> it's got to come over there. Okay. There. So, you know, might be able to squeeze that through there. We'll see. Okay, now there's two 15 millimeters that mount this onto the uh, above the wheel well here. And uh, what I'm going to use here, I've got a 15 millimeter deep well, 6 inch extension. Put this down over there. I expect these maybe have a little more torque on them. I have 3 8 inch gear here, so I'm going to step that up to half inch. Oh yeah, that's torqued on. There it comes. There's one other one on the other side. So we'll just proceed to take these two off. Alrighty, we're wrapping up the real well part of this. What I've decided to do is separate this mount into two pieces. I just think it's going to be a lot easier to bring it out and work with it. Besides, these upper ones, absolutely easy to get out. Not only that, I can put a gigantic breaker bar on there to bust them loose. Get a 24 inch in here. And I'm pretty sure this thing is going to come out. I'm not messing with it. Now the other part of this, the other section of this uh, front engine mount has to come out. And there's basically three 15 millimeters. And there's not a lot of room in there. So we're going to have to get a, a wrench in there and uh, tap those loose and then pull them out. Okay, so we got these three loose with our 18 millimeter box end. A little help from a hammer tapping on them to knock them loose. The lowest one I have to do from underneath. I can't reach it. But I think I'm just going to turn one of these out and see what we have here. So here's the problem. With these bolts, these three bolts, see this one right here, and then the other two backed out all the way, they top out against the inner wheel well. So you can't get this piece out. This part of the uh, the front engine mount, and therefore we can't get a tool in here. At least I haven't figured out a way yet to take this plug out and thereby remove this fixed right side chain gun. I shortened up an Allen wrench. It's 10 millimeter in there. Let's see if we can bust this thing loose. 
So this thing's on here really nicely. I mean, when a cheater bar like this won't help, it's time to go in there and put in a little penetrant that sit in there for a while. Try it later. Huh. Wow. Okay, so there's the plug out. We got it out. No finesse involved here. Just a cheater bar that must have been two and a half feet long and the nerve to go ahead and push it to the limit. Okay, here's right. what we're going to use here now. We've got a, let's see what size is this here, uh, 10 millimeter. I've got a quarter inch, quarter inch uh, socket here. I've got we don't a, have enough light. Okay, and going in. There's room enough now to get it on the nut. I'm on there now. Not that hard to reach. And now, we'll just put... So now we're using that universal joint and a 3 inch extension along with a 10 millimeter. Let's see if we can turn it loose. Yep. And you can see the thing right in there. It's right almost to the outside of this. Okay, so we finessed it out of there. Had to use a dental pick to get it the last last little ways. Again, this is the, the little rig we used. Okay, we're on the inch and a quarter um, nut or for the uh, tensioner, the timing belt tensioner. See it back here on the firewall side of the engine. And I've got my perfectly inch and a quarter fits on there perfectly. So it's right on that back side. And now we're just gonna give it a easy. Holy cow. Didn't need the breaker bar on that one. It came right away. Okay, we'll get a ratchet in there and finish it up. Now I'm really curious about this part if this had a played a role in the failure here. Now there must have been tension on it because when we pulled it out you saw the you saw the effect it had on the chain. Chain jump, so that's it. So we're going to take off this upper guide now, and there's two 10 millimeter nuts to be removed there. And off with the upper guide. Okay, while holding the camshaft now, let's break the uh, There it goes. That's on there pretty good. And we've got a big breaker bar on this. And we took it to get it off of there. Okay, now we can pull this out. Um, That's off with the uh, sprocket. Okay, we're going to take off this lower, um, this the, the bolt for the, it's called the adjustable guide, and that's 10 millimeter there too. There it is. Since we can go straight in. Okay. Okay, so now the adjustable guide can come up and out. I have to stay there and there it is. Alright, okay, we're doing the lower one now. Get it busted loose. And we can turn it out. Rest it away by hand. Okay, now we're gonna do the lower bring the lower guide out. And actually it comes through the bottom here. So there it is. Okay, now while holding the cam intake cam set shaft, we're turning off the um, cam gear. Okay. 
on there good. These sprockets, they, apparently they're not designed to be taken out and put back in. The bolts. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's, that's something I've seen several Just times. Okay. You take it off the uh, shaft, lift it up. One hand underneath here, pulling it off the sprocket down below. Now it's going to get hung up here on this uh, engine boss. Just use something to i going to guide it around that if you can. Okay, it's caught on the little oiler. Easiest way is from underneath. Kind of guide that around that boss. And we're out, out of there. I lay these two chains out side by side. The new one on the bottom. The old one is longer. About three eighths of an inch, or 4.5 to 5 millimeters longer. Just to show, this is before here. Put the cams back on. This is actually the exhaust timing mark, it's sitting about 12 o'clock. What we need is the intake mark at 2 o'clock on this one, and that's going to require rotating this even more than uh, 180 degrees. And on the other side, on the exhaust, that's the intake mark. So we've got to bring the exhaust mark right here up to base up to uh, 10 o'clock. Put this gear in the proper timing position. It put the piston top dead center on cylinder one. Okay, if you've lost the relationship between the cams and the crank, put the crank at about 90 degrees. That'll ensure that all three, all four pistons are midway between there up and down positions and you won't have any risk of uh, damaging a valve as you turn those cams around into their correct locations. So using a wrench we carefully brought this cam around to where the intake timing mark um, points toward two and that's kind of a natural stop place. The spring um, tension in the cam causes it to stop right there. So we'll do the same on this one. I'm rotating it clockwise, just a bit at a time, um, to get the exhaust mark at uh, 10 o'clock. Two, basically two rotations to click and um, this is where it wanted to stop so this so this then is the uh, correct camshaft timing location on the sprockets okay so stay tuned for part four where we're gonna it's gonna be out with the old in with the new we've got a cloys kit it's kit 9-4201s